Hi everyone, thanks for dropping down to Pete's Garage. I want to share something with you that has come up with a lot of my customers and a lot of people have been coming to me for and I never really thought it was something that I could share and that you could use. And that's about plastic, specifically welding plastic. It is possible to weld plastic just like you weld metal. But just like welding metal, there are a couple things that are very important. First of all, understanding and knowing what the base material are. Just like there are many different kinds of metal, steel, stainless steel, uh, all different kinds of base metals, there are all different kinds of base plastics. Polystyrenes, polyethylenes, high density polyethylenes, uh, HDPEs, all different kinds of plastics. So it's important to understand the base material. The other part is selecting the proper uh, tool to weld the plastic. There are basically two methods. Hot air welding, which is uh, uh, like equivalent to like uh, oxyacetylene welding and then there's a uh, hot iron welding which is much like soldering and that's a method I prefer because you control the heat a little bit more and reduces warping. Now when welding plastic there are two basic categories that plastics fall in. There are thermal set plastics and thermal plastic plastics and the difference is very simple. A thermal set plastic is a plastic that is intended that is molded once and is not intended to melt again. It usually comes in a powder form. The powder is put into a mold, compressed under high pressure and heat. The resulting product is something that is very rigid. Uh, a common trade name is Bakelite. You might have heard Bakelite before. Old distributor caps were made out of Bakelite. They, they were made that way so that when they heat up they don't melt again. Uh, even baking products like pot holders, things like that, if you have a, a plastic pot holder, it's usually made out of a thermal set plastic so it won't melt again when you put something hot on it. The most common plastic, probably 95% of all the plastics we use, are thermoplastic plastics. These are plastics that are molded once and can be melted again. And literally every plastic you touch is probably a thermoplastic plastic. Uh, anything from uh, plastic sheeting to plastic sandwich bags, uh, uh, some cutting boards uh, are pla thermoplastic plastic, dash panels, uh, most of your interior parts on your engine, the fan shrouds, uh, most of the sensors are made out of plastic. Those are all plastics that can be melted again. And sometimes you might have run into that if you put heat on something or something has been exposed to heat, you'll see it warp. Your dashboard is thermoplastic, that'll warp. Dash panels, uh, interior column panels, everything, almost everything in your car is a thermoplastic plastic, vinyl, those kind of things are all thermoplastic. So once you understand that, you understand what you want to weld, uh, you can choose the right tool to weld it, the right filler material, and the well, filler material, and the white, right way to weld that material together. So what I'd like to do first, before I show you the tools and the process and how to weld plastic, I'm going to open up the hood of the car, show you common things that break and common things that you can fix and weld back to, if not better than normal, at least good enough and strong enough to use again. But let's look underneath the hood here real quick and I'm going to show you the kind of things that you can fix and the different kinds of uh, plastics that are under here. Obviously you look around and everything is plastic. And let's start with the basic things. We have a, a, a filler tank here that's uh, for the antifreeze. This is a poly, probably a polypropylene. Uh, if you get a leak in here, a little crack, something, maybe you get a leak there, you can fix that, weld that shut. We have the cover that's over the engine. This is probably an ABS, a little harder, acetobutylstyrene. Uh, if you take this off and you crack something around one of these bolt holes, you can weld that and fix that up. Uh, we have the shroud here, which is usually a fan. This is very flexible. Again, this is probably an ABS. This is uh, something you can fix. Uh, the air box, when you take something off, maybe around one of the sensors you might break off one of the tabs and you can't get it to seat right, that is something you can weld. We have the container for the uh, windshield washer fluid. Uh, over time, sometimes these crack and split along the edges. You can drain that out, you can weld that seam together, fix that brand, is brand good, uh, brand new, just like it was uh, came out of the factory. The connectors, right where the uh, tube comes on to, to uh, return. Uh, if that breaks or you get a leak there, you take it off and crack it, you can weld that back on. If we look over on the side here, uh, those are all the wires that go to the motor. Uh, we have our uh, 
power steering, I'm sorry, the, the uh, brake fluid container, again, polypropylene. Uh, if you take it apart and you can break a little tab, those are things you can weld back on, which is very frustrating. And then finally, uh, you got your fuse box. If you open up your fuse box, and, and maybe you might break one of these little tabs in here that hold it shut, and if you break one of those, and you can't get your fuse box to stay shut, that is something you can weld. It's flexible. You can see I'm pushing it in and out here. But if it does break off, you can weld that back on. And when you do weld it back on, it's something that you can uh, close properly and get it to be watertight, and that way you won't have to worry about it leaking again. This is the kit I use. You can find this online at Amazon. It's made by the uh, Urethane Supply Company, and it's very simply a mini weld Model 5. It's an airless plastic welder, Model 5500 HT. There's a toll-free number if you like more information, I can get it for you. But let me show you what this kit is. Obviously it's a polypropylene case, got these hinges built in, and the hinges built right in. And what you get, this is what you get in the kit. You get a bunch of material, filler materials, which are just like welding rods. Different colors, different shapes, different types for different types of plastics. Clear milky ones, hard plastic ones. Uh, all different kinds of welding rod. You can see that there are different colors, different shapes, different hardnesses, depending on the plastic you're going to be welding. Uh, this is something I'm going to be using. It's really cool. This is, uh, here's some clear vinyl, which is really neat. This is what I'm going to be using. This is a plastic that has Kevlar built in. They're flat straps, and uh, what you do is the Kevlar is in there and allows you to build strength around parts where you need strength built in. Uh, there's some, they give you some wire stainless steel meshing so you can bury it in uh, the plastic to add additional strength. And if I look through the different types, there are, there are many, many different types of filler material. Clear, clear vinyl, so if you're fixing something that's vinyl. Many, many different kinds of plastics in here. You also get, and I'm trying, let me move this out of the way, you get the soldering iron itself. And the soldering iron simply looks like this and it's a flat tip and what the flat tip does, you see there's a hole in there and what you can do is as this heats up you feed the filler material let me grab a piece of filler material here the filler material gets fed into that hole and as you fiddle it into the hole it melts and it comes out the bottom and it fills in any of the gap that you're going to be welding so I have the, the soldering iron, or the heat iron, and it has a temperature control. And it really shows you, it's really nice because it shows you as you turn it on, it shows you what you're doing with your doing here. Weld rod, it's a white rod, clear rod, black rod, gray rod. So it shows you the temperature and where it should be set for each specific plastic. And it simply plugs into a 110 outlet. Very, very simple tool to use. And I'm going to be welding. Let me show you what I'm going to be welding. I'll put this down and I'll show you uh, what I'm going to be welding and how the process works. Okay, so, very simply, I'm just going to take this and I'm going to put some heat on here and you'll see some smoke come off when it, when it starts to melt. Keep my arm out of the way. Let me switch hands here. And I'm going to start to heat up one plastic and drag it into the other. And it happens very, very fast. There are different temperature settings, but since I've done this so many times, I leave it on the highest temperature setting because I can do this very quick. But when you're, when you're uh, just learning how to do this, I suggest that you use the lower settings and work up to higher temperature settings. So just like that, I have dragged, I've heated up some material on this side, melted it, and brought it over to seal that weld, or to seal that crack, and weld those two pieces of plastic together. Now what I'm going to do is, I talked about the Kevlar reinforced filler rod. This is just a Kevlar rod. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this, I'm going to put it on here and I'm going to melt it and I'm going to pull this away. So as it heats up, I'm going to melt it. You see, you can probably see, I hope you wish you could see it start to melt. I'll turn it this way. You see how it's starting to melt? I'm going to melt that and I'm going to sort of like pull this away and leave some of it underneath. Just like that. Weld it. Now, you see I have a bunch of plastic there. That's left over from the 
the rod, the filler rod I just pulled in. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this and very slowly and very gently I'm going to take my iron and I'm going to move it around to melt that filler rod and since the Kevlar is in strands I'm going to go in straight directions so that the Kevlar strands don't get all uh, crooked and I lose the strength because Kevlar is in, is in straight lines just like you see the Kevlar cloth. It's what we it's a woven into a cloth and when it's straight is when it's the strongest. So I'm going to get this as smooth as possible here just like that. Weld that together. Put on some filler rod and and looking at this part when they push down on this, when, when someone puts this in somebody's mouth, most of the stress is going that way. So I want to add filler material on this side here. So I'm going to turn this a little bit so you can see. And you can see, still see I have some plastic left over from the, the, other, the, the uh, filler material. So I'm just going to kind of melt that and move that into place. I'm trying to work around here. This is working fairly well. I'll just go like that. You can see the plastic start to melt. And when it gets the right temperature, I don't want to over melt it because it will sag. So I'm going to weld it just like that. The uh, cyanoacrylate is starting to seal. I can smell it starting to, to really, uh, really dry out. So now I'm going to add some more filler rod. I'm going to take my, my Kevlar. This is where I want to build it up. So I'm going to put a lot of it in here. I'm going to take this. I'm going to melt a big chunk off. I'm almost going to like weld it and cut it off like this. I'm going to weld it, weld it in place up here. Come back here. And I'm going to sort of pull it. See how it's coming off? And I'm going to cut that off just like that. I'm going to weld that just like this. Pull some more filler rod. Pull it off. You see how it uh, melts right off? So now I have a bunch of filler material here. So now what I can do is I can take my iron and I can start to smooth this out. Oops. I'm going to start to take this and I'm going to start to make this look a little better so that when it's sitting in the dentist chair, when a person sits in a dentist chair, they don't look at this tool and wonder what kind of hack this guy is, but he's a really nice guy, so I try and do a really good job for him. So I'm going to weld that just like this. Smooth out that plastic. Bring it up into the part that cracked off. Just like that. Whoops. Get that back. Just like that. And I'll continue to smooth out. Smooth out just like that. Bring it back towards the base where I need some more strength. Now I'm going to slowly shape this with the iron. Drag it around to smooth it out. Drag it out just like that. Very, very slow, very light. You don't want to hold it in one spot for too long because that's when you will melt a big blob and you'll be fixing that for a while. So I'm going to do that. I want to get up in here where it's cracked. Give it add a little support. off right there like that my iron and I'm just going to smooth that out over the crack right there where there was a material missing go just like that make sure it looks just right I'm going to shape this right around the steel so it looks like it blends right in very very light now I'll put some finishing touches right around right around where uh, I need to put in some some strength because this is right around in here get my my uh, tool again I'll put the iron down I'll get my screwdriver and show you right around here is where I wanted to add I wanted to add strength right in here right in here because this is where it cracked right up in there so I'll just take my iron and I'm going to gently 
gently take this and drag some material up in that area. Smooth it out so it looks a lot neater. Just like that. Nice and smooth. So here we go, here's the finished part. You know, I just touched up on a, on a buffer just to clean it up a little bit, make sure there's no sharp edges so when it's put in a patient's mouth they don't feel any sharp edges, there's no chance of cutting any anybody. But this is a very, very uh, a small example of plastic welding. Uh, but as you can see, if I can weld a small piece of plastic like this and make it stronger than the original, there's there's a, no limit to what you can weld on your car. If you break something off, a tab off, if you crack something on your dashboard, uh, don't worry about it. Uh, sometimes the the uh, adhesives don't work, but uh, you can see here that, that you can weld plastic, and, and it's a very formable material. As long as you do it right and take your time, you can have a very exceptional result. So there you go. Another tool or technique or talent, if you will, that you have in your arsenal when you go to restore a car. It's not even for restoring cars. I restored a, a, I fixed a surgical implement uh, just by welding plastic. And ju I just wanted to show you that it is possible to weld plastic. So when you're restoring your car, if you have an old part that's cracked, you don't have to buy a new one, you can weld it. If you're taking apart the dash and break one of the lands that hold the dash to the metal, you can weld it. If you strip a thread in a hole, that holds a plastic piece on, you can fill it in with plastic, re-drill it, and re-thread it. So well, learning to weld plastic is a really beneficial technique to learn. It's a very uh, beneficial trade, or, or, or whatever you want to call it, but it, it is a very good tool. And you'll find that when you start fixing your plastic parts, you're going to start saving a lot of money. Because if you break a part of a dash or something like that, and you have to buy a new dash panel that costs $150, $200, it's a lot better to fix it for 50 cents in a couple hours of your time versus buying a new part. You can also fix plastic lenses, like if you have a cracked tail lens or a, a cracked headlight lens that is a clear uh, polycarbonate, uh, maybe even it, it's acrylic because that's have optical clarity and you can weld that back together. So before you go spending hundreds of dollars on a new light, try and fix it first. You, if you fix it right, yeah, you might have a little bit of seam there, but you can buff that out, polish it like it's brand new, and save yourself a lot of money. I hope you enjoyed this. I tried to make them educational. I know I don't post a lot of videos, but I try to make them uh, educational and help you with your uh, rest restoration efforts and whatever you're doing. And I hope you enjoyed it. This is Pete. Thanks for stopping by Pete's Garage.